All right. Welcome. Welcome, guys. We are live. Day two of Seven Figure Seller Summit. Today was all about marketing, branding, and PPC. And in this session, this will be a live Q&A. Um, I think it's kind of going to be like the 80-20 of the whole day. It's like, you know, that golden hour, like, you know, when the sun starts to set and you're taking pictures, everything just looks like you know, a Kodak moment or, you know, it looks amazing, <laughs> right? So this hour, I hope it's going to be that golden hour for you guys to get maximum value out of marketing. Any questions you have about um, uh, keyword domination, you know, Michelle's going to be here, PPC. We have three of the top, top experts in PPC. I'm super excited and honored to have you guys. Um, before we get started, if you can see and hear us, can you please type your name and where you're joining us from? First off, I would like to welcome Michelle Barnum Smith. How's it going, Michelle? Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Good to nice see time. all you brilliant people. Brian, welcome. <laughs> yes, yes, welcome, welcome. And also, I would like to welcome Ellis Whitehead. How are you doing today, Ellis? I'm great. Great to be here with all of you. Yes, yes. I know you're in Germany. So, what yeah. time is it for you over there? Uh, midnight. Oh, awesome. Well, thanks for staying up late with us. Also, we have uh, Brian Johnson joining us. How's it going, Brian? Doing fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, Brian. And also, we have Ritu Java joining us. How are you today, Ritu? Hey, guys. Yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, it's a beautiful day here in Vancouver, Canada. Awesome. Great, guys. Cool. Great, great. So um, this is a very valuable opportunity to get your questions answered live. Um, we'll have one hour for this session. And I hope that we can be very interactive because this is a, a golden opportunity for you guys to uh, to interact with many of our speakers from today. Um, so before we get started, maybe we can go around the table, um, starting with Michelle. Can you just uh, remind, let people know uh, what you spoke about today in case they yeah. haven't watched it yet? Yeah. Yeah. So my whole world is external traffic. I'm known as the queen of Amazon chatbots. I've been pioneering Amazon sellers use chatbots to launch rank and harvest reviews since 2017. They've launched thousands and thousands of Amazon products in my career um, and we ranked those products as well. Uh, so my session today was all about keyword domination, which is an advanced ranking strategy when you have um, multiple products that sometimes overlap in the types of keywords that you want to rank for, how to show up and dominate the competition on the actual sales page by this kind of advanced ranking strategy. Um, and this is a really great strategy that you can use, not just if you have um, several products, but also to help guide your product selection and your product roadmap. So it's, it's one of the very first um, ranking strategies that I ever learned uh, working with Amazon sellers. And um, I'm excited in this session, if you are able to catch it, to kind of learn uh, this cool technique to help you uh, develop your brand and your opportunities on Amazon with, with external traffic. Awesome, awesome. So this is a super valuable session for keyword domination. Uh, and I think it's uh, pretty, it, it's very valuable, especially for advanced sellers. So that's gonna be awesome. If you guys have any questions about uh, keyword research, um, how to really accelerate your brand's growth, feel free to drop in the chat and you can drop it in the chat anytime, guys. All right, yeah. so that's <laughs> gonna be awesome. Uh, meanwhile, I'd like to quickly Give some shout outs to Charlene Williams from Loganville, Georgia. Welcome, Charlene. Uh, welcome, Al. Al, I, I believe you were in the UK. You joined yesterday. So welcome. I know it's late for you. Uh, wel welcome, Kelly Lowe from New Zealand. Great to have you. And all of the, the sessions today, Al was asking, how long will, the, will all the videos be available for? They will be available for 24 hours. So make sure you catch the sessions. Uh, within the 24 hours and we also have an all access pass if you'd like to unlock all the sessions for lifetime access there's an option to do that as well it will be at the bottom of the the page so thank you thank you all right so Certainly. thanks michelle uh next ritu can you share with us what what are what did you speak about today at the summit yes yeah absolutely so yeah so i spoke about the 80 20 of amazon ppc ad types um and, you know, as you guys know, there is a lot of, uh, you know, talk about CPCs rising with um, 
all kinds of uh, you know keywords that are extremely competitive competitive and so uh, my talk was basically about unlocking all of the other types that you don't mainly focus on it's uh, most people are, you know, fishing in a very crowded pond um, and it's getting more and more saturated. So basically I talk about ad diversification and um, how to find uh, the ad types that work best for different types of goals uh, in my talk today. So definitely catch that and uh, feel free to ask any questions if you have uh, also uh, touched upon uh, budgets and how to kind of uh, think about budgets in terms of different ad types today. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And next we have Ellis Whitehead. Can you share? What did you talk about today? Uh, well, at uh, Databril, we do some of the most sophisticated scientific PPC around. And this section was basically an interview. And so we talked about the state of PPC, trends we've been seeing, what's working and what's not working now, and preparation for Q4, among other things. Awesome. Thank you. And also we have Brian Johnson. Welcome, Brian. Can you share what did you teach today at the session? Uh, so yeah, so my session was basically on, uh, well, it was on advanced listing optimization. So this is uh, one of the things, one of the two things that are being taught heavily this year um, regarding uh, really driving engagement with shoppers, um, standing out from the competition, getting engagement for the shoppers, as well as increasing conversion rates uh, at the listing level. And the way I see it is it's a huge opportunity because most of the listings that we see on Amazon have used a very classic uh, SEO keyword driven uh, optimization. And this is basically peeling that back and saying, throw it out. Here's something that is actually working now in 2021. Yes, yes. I, I love how Brian Johnson, I mean, he's well known for, for PPC, but he really went back to the fundamentals, like even before PPC, like just optimizing your listing. I think there's a ton of value there. So, um, yeah. all right. So we have some questions already. Uh, first off from Gary in NYC, the question for Brian for listing differentiation. Can you give examples how to convey motion in a still life photo to attract the eye of a potential customer? Brian? Convey motion. Um, gosh, that's a good question. I haven't considered that because Amazon doesn't support motion um, in a still image. Um, probably, I mean, if it was picked up as far as I was talking about, as far as motion catching the attention, that of course would be sponsor brand video ad, which is the only thing that's going to support that. Um, in a still image. Yeah. Unless you're doing like an optical illusion, I don't know how you would, how you would do that. You know, you've got to go with the other ones where, you know, you have something where it's a sharp contrast in the color, um, or you've got you know, a significant amount of white space around the main, you know, the main product image uh, when uh, when all the rest of your competitors have cluttered main images. It really, it comes down to doing the exact opposite of what most of your competitors are doing in the search results as far as your main image. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think I agree. It's it's a little difficult to convey motion in a still photo, but yeah. yeah that's solid. And infographics would not be allowed. No, no graphics are te technically allowed on main image. Right. Although right. some get through. Yeah. Okay. And next question is also from Gary. Any infographics allowed on the main image? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, sorry, right. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. You're moving fast. All right. Yeah. Really no, it was uh, waiting my, for my caffeine to kick in, but awesome, Brian. Okay. <laughs> no, no yeah. Going. So you're not going to have uh, technically against terms of service to have images, uh, that are, um, that have graphics, the main image have graphics. You can certainly do that on subsequent ones. As long as you keep, my recommendation is to keep it succinct um, yeah. instead of, oop, did I freeze up? There we go. No, you're good. You're okay, good. good. Um, the, uh, yeah, you're not gonna have, um, you're likely to get caught if you try to put any kind of graphics or logos into your main image. Um, you, you can certainly put it into your secondary images, but make sure your secondary images are very succinct so that people can absorb them. Don't, if you try to put too much in there, then they're not, you're going to see, you're not going to get the message across basically in your subsequent uh, images. So keep it, keep each thing succinct, whether it's an image or a bullet point, keep it succinct. Great, great. Okay. Did I mention keep it succinct? 
<laughs> keep it succinct. <laughs> 80, 20 rule. Keep it succinct. Awesome, guys. So we're, we're right in the middle of this. Um, you know, I always say sharing is caring, guys. So if you're watching this and if you have a friend or you know someone that's selling on Amazon, that's in e-com, why not invite them to, to join us? Uh, sevenfiguresellersummit.com. They can get a free pass to join us. All right. So let's keep going, guys. Al says, where do I start? with searching for keywords besides using Amazon search bar and helium 10, what is the best way to do this? Michelle, you were talking about keyword domination. Would you like to, yeah. to help Al? So, so our process for finding keywords for external traffic campaigns, chatbot ranking rebate campaigns, those types of things is to start with auditing your own listing. So I like to do what I call a ranking audit, where you do a reverse ASIN lookup on your own ASIN to reveal the keywords that you are ranking for and the ones that you are not ranking for, right? So typically I like to use Helium 10 Cerebro um, to do this. You can use the tool of your choice that can do reverse ASIN lookup. Um, and essentially what I like to do is look for keywords over a thousand monthly searches um, from a search volume perspective where you are off page one. And this is what I call like low hanging fruit um, uh, opportunity because if you're not on page one, are you ever like, are you there to win? Are you there to play the game? You know, like what's the, you know, there's the, the joke that says, what's the best place to hide it? Where's the best place to hide a dead body? Page two. Page two. Right? <laughs> that's, true for, that's true for Google. It's true for Amazon as well. So if you're not on page one, you're not there to win the game or play the game at all. So so look at look for those, those keywords that are where you're off position 21 and beyond um, that I call like the low hanging fruit keywords and look for those that have that are relevant that have a good amount of uh, monthly search volume and then depending on your inventory levels because we don't want you to go after keywords that you cannot um, afford both from an in-stock perspective as well as like the search volume like if you were to rank for those keywords would you like would your stock get eviscerated like that you know what i mean and and we don't like in and out of stock situations on amazon right yeah. um so those are those are kind of like my methodologies uh for identifying uh keyword terms for chatbot campaigns external traffic campaigns as well i'm not i'm not sure what your guys's process is for for researching keywords but i'll Open it up to you guys. I would, um, yeah, yeah. I would really like to emphasize the importance of brand analytics, the yeah. brand analytics reports, because Helium Ten and Jungle Scout and others. Uh, well, I'll just say those two. Um, they have way more keywords than we tend to actually find useful, and if you have a medium volume type sales product that you're looking at. Um, you're going to get, I mean, brand analytics is the truth right from the horse's mouth or whatever that expression is. Um, and, and there's no reason uh, for, at, for products with at least medium volume, there's, in my opinion, no reason to go to need, I should say no need. Everything you said, Michelle, is you know great, uh, but there's no additional need to go to those tools. Um, as long, but the review, I mean, reverse ASIN lookup, that's, that's great, but you can also do that in Helium, um, not in Helium 10, in um, indirectly through the brand analytics by looking up your competitors, even if you're not in there yet. And uh, so if you have a good list of competitors and you know what your main keywords should be, then this will give you information on the ones that are really, you know, really being searched for and not the many, many, many additional thousands that you might be getting from, uh, or the additional thousand or so you might be getting from Helium 10 and Jungle Scout. That's where I would find it. Yeah, unless it's a, yeah, unless yeah. it's a really low volume, like maybe you have a really high priced item or something really low volume, then, uh, then we find that sometimes the Helium 10 and Jungle Scout uh, keyword lists uh, can, can be quite helpful too. Yeah, I'd say most of the tools, most of the larger tools probably contain, I don't know, I would speculate at 80 to 80 to 100 million keywords. You figure with brand analytics, it's going to be the top million, about 1.1, 1, 1. 1. 1.4 million um, searched terms. 
Um, uh, you de I definitely agree with you on that one, Ellis, is that you definitely want to look at those. Um, it's not going to be an exhaustive list. Like if you're in a very competitive niche, then you, you probably have more available keywords that are in the top million um, uh, search terms that are available through brand analytics. Uh, sometimes you probably may need to uh, supplement with additional lower uh, long tail keywords that have lower volume that may not show up on the brand analytics radar. But I definitely agree is that that is uh, we've built custom tools just for analyzing patterns within brand analytics. So it's definitely there's a lot of data in there that's there is. nice to look at. So and one of the yeah. if you use the stuff, the, the brand analytics, um, then even the keywords that you're not getting, in all likelihood, if you have broad match campaigns, so from the PPC side, if you have broad match campaigns on the good keywords, those are going to be bringing in all the searches that uh, that are longer tail than brand analytics. And, um, and so broad, if you're starting out doing some broad match, I would say is also uh, an important source of, of getting keywords, but that's of course after the fact. Me too. Would you yeah, like to weigh in? Yeah, yeah. I could. Uh, I could share uh, the process we use at our agency. So I think I agree with all that you guys have said. Uh, with you know regards to brand analytics, I think that's the most important in terms of like data coming straight from the horse's mouth. Um, so what we do uh, with our brand analytics is that we start with a very short tail keyword to in order to kind of allow for all sorts of variations that include that word in it. So the shortest seed that you can think of. So for example, if you're talking about, let's say, um, I don't know, garlic press or something, uh, you know, even starting with the word garlic, we start with the shortest possible uh, term and then let it expand out uh, all the variations that include that word. And then of course, do a step of cleaning up because that gives us um, all possible, you know, permutations, combinations of uh, words that include that. So we do it a couple different times. So we'll do it with garlic, we'll do it with press and see what shows up and we clean that list. That's our first step. Um, second, we go to um, Cerebro, as Michelle said, uh, and we also do the, um, you know, get competitors kind of thing. So let's say you're starting a fresh, you don't even have any uh, data to go off of, uh, we would just pick the top competitors and use all of them and find all of their keywords and then kind of go through a process of cleanup and uh, come up with the list there. And then the third step we do is uh, we use merchant words, not for the search term vol search volume, because that is, you know, a little uh, unreliable because they use different sources. Um, but just for the long tail, like Brian was saying, there's so many like long tail keywords that you might be missing out on because brand analytics won't capture them in the top uh, to one to two million um, searches. So when we pu put all of that in a jumbo list and then uh, you know pick um, enough from each section so that we have kind of the whole spectrum covered from extremely popular keywords to uh, you know very low volume keywords, but a really good relevant uh, long tail keywords. One thing uh, that's a great, a great approach, I would say. Totally agree with that. One of the things to keep in mind, if it's not in the brand analytics report, then the search volume is under 10 searches a day. And so you'd have to be in a niche where you have a, uh, a lot of those super long tail keywords, which is unlikely, um, or really high conversion rate. Uh, to to make those worth it, and it's definitely worth it for clients with you know maybe high price, low sale, low sales frequency items. Uh, we don't find like for our high volume clients, we actually never find keywords outside of the um, outside of brand analytics that make any difference to their bottom line. Um, but for the ones with lower sales, then yeah, they can. Very interesting, guys. And um, I also saw in the in the comment, I believe Sharon Evan is joining us. Sharon Evan is uh, one of our speakers, and she says brand analysts would be one of the places to check apart from Search Tool Helium Ten. Hello, everyone. And uh, Sharon also says I still I think H Helium is a tool to still check. Helps with low hanging fruits too. I would just use both of them together. Awesome. Um, I'd like to take a moment to also thank our sponsor. You know, talking about all the tools, I would like to thank Zonguru as they're one of the, the top research tools as well. And I think, you know, one of the things that most of the other tools don't do is brand analytics 
can get um zon guru can get you the brand analytics data from amazon so even if you're not brand registered that's another way that you can access that data so definitely check out zon guru if you're interested in learning more all right so great question guys ton of value dropped there uh let's keep going we're getting more questions coming in uh one second Charlene, on my ad campaigns, I'm getting impressions, but not a lot of conversions. As a new seller, what's the best strategy steps to take to help address this? Who would like to take a shot at this to help Charlene? Yeah, but I can jump in there too. I was kind of awesome. letting Ellis lead on that one, but yeah. Um, yeah, right. yeah, so as far as impressions, but not a lot of conversions, um, you know, obviously one of the first things I'm going to say, even though I'm, you know, known for PBC is of course, look at your, you look at your listing, you know, are you actually yeah. speaking to your target audience? Or are you trying to stuff keywords into your title and your product listing in order to get indexed and ranked by Amazon? Um, so part of your approach, um, you may have a low conversion rate, uh, depending on the product niche that you're in. Uh, but if you're putting out a compelling listing that, that stands out from your competition, that you've got something compelling. Hopefully you've brought something to market that is um, that is an upgrade from what's currently available. You didn't just copy somebody else, of course. Um, then you probably have some, some kind of a feature or benefit that you can emphasize to shoppers in order to, to gain not only their attention, but their conversion as well. Um, if it simply is where your organic sales are coming through just fine and your ads are not converting, then the ads may simply just be a targeting issue. Um, of course, it's going to depend on which ad types that you've launched. Um, I didn't get much detail on that one, but I'm guessing that there's other clues in there, including click through rate and the advertised conversion rate on each ad type are probably going to paint a bigger uh, a more of a story as far as like where the strength and the weaknesses are with either the product or the ad strategy being used. Um, I see a number of, um, there is, there's, there's plenty of bad advice that's out there right now. Um, when it comes to ad strategy, um, you know, so that that's possible, but again, we don't, we don't really have enough information in this little you know tight spot but i'd be curious to know as far as like what some of the click-through rates and conversion rates are for the different ad campaigns that you've got running to kind of get a better read on it, are any of them working or if there's some exceptions that are simply failing Excellent. one of the first things i'd be curious here is you know what's the conversion rate because you you the question says not a lot of conversions but you know What's, what's that mean? It might be that the expectations, as a new seller, it might be that your expectations of conversion rate are higher than reality. Uh, the average conversion rate across Amazon is 10%. And so, you know, maybe you're seeing, maybe you do have 10%, and it just looks like 10 orders out of 100 clicks is low. Uh, it's not. And I mean, there are different niches. There's some rare niches where you might have actually like 40% conversion rate or something. But in general, it's 10%. And if you're in a niche with a 3% conversion rate, and they exist, uh, then you have to also keep in mind, you would only expect with a 3% conversion rate, one conversion for every 33 clicks. And so uh, keep that in mind when you're looking at these numbers as well. And if you're optimizing your campaigns, and you have 3% conversion rate, do not go and say, oh, this is a bad keyword if you've gotten 20 clicks and no sales. Um, so you'd just be shooting yourself in the foot uh, with an approach like that. Yeah, you um, may want to refine that so that you are, depending on if you've got bu budget restrictions, you may have to pick your battles differently, maybe not go for as popular and high search aggressive terms that are very expensive uh, from a competition standpoint. Obviously, most people should be aware, of course, that since March, uh, the, the traffic and therefore sales and conversion rates on Amazon overall have decreased significantly as a result of the changes with, with uh, COVID restrictions, um, other than the spike in June for a Prime Day, of course. Um, but I, that's, that's just for those who think it's like, oh, I'm experiencing something that nobody else is. Probably not probably in line with what's going on but there are things like what we're recommending is there's definitely some ways that you can 
revisit your ad strategy as well as your uh, the way that you've structured your product listing um, to definitely improve your engagement and conversion rate. Yeah, definitely plenty of opportunity there. Something to also consider is that social proof plays a huge role in conversions. So and if you are a new seller, I'm assuming you have a new product, which probably means that you don't have too many reviews. And so pursuing review strategies as well, um, uh, not black hat strategies, but but legitimate strategies such as product inserts or running ranking campaigns that include follow up uh, for review requests uh, could do something be something that you employ to also help to improve your social proof because if you are ranked um, but all your competitors have reviews and you do not that definitely affects conversion. Yeah, and I can also ch um, chip in here. Um, so I think. Um, you know, the way we look at, um, you know, problems like this, we want to troubleshoot it by trying to identify where the problem or the bottleneck lies. So you have, you know, this imagine a funnel of impressions and clicks and sales. Uh, and between those three bands, there's a click through rate and there's a conversion rate. So if you are, are getting impressions, uh, but not enough clicks, and you know, that could be a problem of your click through rate being too low. But if you're getting enough clicks and not enough uh, sales, then it could be a problem of your conversion rate. So where is the problem, right? Where where can you find uh, the bottleneck? Um, and then also with getting a lot of impressions, do you think it's coming from auto campaigns or is it a different type of ad? Uh, because some of the um, you know ad types can give you a pretty broad reach and make you feel like you're getting uh, a lot of people seeing your ad, but you know, those ad types may not actually be the ones that will uh, result in anything, um, you know, in terms of conversions or sales uh, too quickly because they are by nature extremely broad, like auto campaigns could be broad, C category targeting also could be broad. So depending on which ad type you're talking about, um, you know, those rates could be different. Uh, so, you know, I think uh, as everyone sa said, you know, it's like uh, trying to figure out where the bottleneck is and then uh, trying to solve that, uh, you know, the, the, the part that is uh, creating the most trouble, whether it's conversion rate, click through rate or impressions themselves. Yeah. That's oh, a good point, actually, sense. Rita, that you made as far as, um, you know, certain ad types kind of tying into what Michelle was saying also is that if you don't have much social proof on your product, then you probably shouldn't be doing um, uh, ASIN targeting, for instance, to try to win the sale from somebody else who does have social proof, who has a stronger value proposition, uh, who has a stronger uh, presence. Um, maybe you wait until to run certain ad types like where you're going head to head with somebody else for uh, comparison, side by side comparison, like a product uh, targeting ad. Uh, wait until you do have that social proof in place. And keep in mind then going along with that, that uh, auto campaigns for a lot of products are basically just product targeting campaigns. So if you're a new if you're a new seller and you're running these auto campaigns, you're mostly doing these product targeting things that Brian was just saying, uh, probably not going to work. But not, uh, not yet, at least. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excellent. I, I love how we're getting all the different perspectives from Michelle, from Ellis, from Ritu and Brian. I mean, it's well-rounded value that we're adding to you guys. So hopefully that helps Charlene. Let's keep going. We have uh, quite a few questions in the chat. Al asked, is there an online tool for getting the correct dimension for uploading images on Amazon? Uh, Amazon. Amazon tells you what it requires and will reject it if you don't. Yeah. So anytime you have either ad creative or an image, it'll tell you these are the dimensions that it's expecting. Yeah. Definitely follow. So Amazon. I'm not sure you need an external tool. It's just it's it's natively built in right there when you actually add in an image or a video. Excellent. All right, let's keep going. Charlene says, "What's the best way to get traction to your listing if you don't have affiliates or a storefront brand as yet?" I can Michelle. I can speak to that. <laughs> say, you talk to Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> External traffic. Um, so, so I've been doing this for a long time, and I've seen um, like, a, like I feel like in Amazon years, like how many years is one year 
when you've been working. <laughs> it's like dog years. <laughs> it's dog yeah. years. Back yeah. in my day, back in 2017, this is how we did this. <laughs> you know? um, but no, so so obviously I focus on external traffic strategies and um, and it's really important when you think about external traffic, um, you know, that how you market to external traffic to Amazon is very different than how you market external traffic to like your own website, for example. So, you know, things like Instagram affiliates and and influencer marketing and all these different things or or playing around with Google AdWords or or whatever. It's really important to understand that to be effective um, in getting traction for your listing, uh, that you do so through keywords. That if you're using um, you're using external traffic, that you're not just like sending it blindly at your listing from like Facebook ads or, or Instagram influencers, things like that. You do so through these keywords so that you can get that laser focus, get traction, get ranking, get launched, um, all that fun stuff. And I prefer to do that via chatbots. Because chatbots, you can, there's multiple benefits, but you get people as subscribers. So you know that Michelle Barnum Smith is the one who clicked on that ad. You can follow up with me, you know, remind me to purchase if I haven't done so, harvest reviews if I have. You know, there's there's so many, there's so many more options when you actually build an audience and know who people are. And that, and we just uh, launched today a cool new uh, feature inside of EasyBot that actually mimics search results coming from Google. Um, Amazon is prioritizing external traffic right now for ranking and getting that traction. And we're seeing massive, massive results in being able to uh, ro run very low rebate campaigns through these links and, uh, and rank with very low rebates in a matter of days versus for very high volume search terms. We, like I was sharing a stat today um, on, my, uh, on my on my Facebook where we had a seller who was completely, um, like a listing that was dead, hadn't had sales, zero sales in over a year. And, uh, and we were able to, you know, re-rank that to position nine in less than eight days uh, for three rebates per day. So that was just an example of kind of like some of the power of external traffic and helping you get uh, traction for your listings. Yeah, I mean, Amazon values the external traffic enough that they are now rewarding it through, you know, kickbacks, basically. Um, my recommendation also is not to focus on just one. And, and I realize that probably a lot of people who are hearing this are saying, it's like, great, here's a whole new thing I need to learn. Uh, but there are people who have, you know, taken this path ahead of you, like Michelle. Um, I know certainly we do external advertising on different platforms to try to mix up the sources of where we're sending either social media, um, you know, Instagram, you know, posts or Google ads or Facebook, um, you know, many chat. It's kind of the, the mix that Amazon really likes to see from us as sellers as far as driving external traffic and they're rewarding it um, more so than a lot of other methods that we spend a lot of money doing. <laughs> They'll give you money back on sales right now. Like they're they're running like a special a special deal today. You know, like be able to take yep, advantage yep. of any sales that that come via Amazon uh, attribution links. You get you know what is it like ten percent back on that sale. Yeah. So, and, and uh, speaking of that, we actually have a session from Paul Harvey about the Amazon brand referral bonus program. So if you guys haven't checked that out, that should be a good one then. Yeah. Yeah, he'll walk you through the the three steps that you know, what it takes to, to do that. So that is actually today. It was today. It launched at 2 PM, Paul Harvey, Amazon brand referral scheme, rank and get 10% back from Amazon fees on autopilot. So highly encourage you guys to check that out. Paul and, Harvey's a good um, guy too. Yeah. And, and one other, well, two other ways to get external traffic, um, to help you Charlene is if you haven't already check out Mike Jackness's session on the importance of sending outside traffic to your Amazon listings. And then, you know, he has multiple seven figure brands of his own, and then he's using authority blog websites, and then he's also using influencers. So if you haven't already highly recommend you check out Mike's session, I wish Mike could join us today, but he's on vacation right now. So uh, definitely check out his, his session. All right, guys, great questions. Let's keep going. And Charlene asked, what's the best ad strategy to use for starting out with a small budget 
does this depend on the product or the niche? Uh, Ritu, would you like to take a shot at this? Sure, yeah. Um, so I think if you're starting out with a small budget, because yeah, we did talk about budget in my session and uh, we yeah. talked about all the different ad types that are available to us. Uh, now, I definitely think that, you know, um, when, when you start off, uh, there's not a lot of history that Amazon has about your product. So definitely taking advantage of some of the ad types that uh, give you the reach that you need, because otherwise, if you go too specific with long tail keywords, it could be a non-starter. Like you could almost, uh, you know, have uh, absolutely no momentum with ex exact match long tail keywords that could just kill you. So you probably need a balance of, um, you know, auto campaigns, category campaigns, um, and some other types of campaigns that can give you uh, a little bit of reach. So when I say auto campaigns, we generally split out our auto campaigns into uh, the four uh, auto targeting groups. And that kind of gives us the, the reach we need, but we also are able to granularly manage the bids on each of them. Um, so yeah, so generally we always start our new launches with four auto campaigns, category targeting, um, as well as, um, you know, uh, of course, the long tail keywords and the broad match modifier keywords. In addition, we also do ranking campaigns for um, certain keywords that we put as single keyword ad groups and single keyword campaigns um, so that we can get traction on just the ones that we are interested in ranking for. So I know that can sound like a lot in terms of, uh, you know, campaigns that you're building out for a, a new launch. Uh, but just remember that, you know, budget does not equal spend. So even if you put like, uh, you know, let's say 20 or $30 budget on each of these campaigns, it doesn't mean that you're going to spend all this budget right away unless your bids are high. If your bids are high and your budget, you know, is, uh, you know, maybe limited, then you're going to be running out of budget pretty quickly. But if your bids are uh, reasonably, um, uh, you know, sized, then you should be able to see traction uh, pretty quickly with these different ad types that give you reach when you don't have any kind of history. And then you can switch strategies, you know, after a couple of weeks when things start to stabilize and data starts to come in, and then you can decide whether you want to uh, have some of your campaigns be a little bit more kind of uh, prominent with uh, top of search uh, modifiers at that point, or even up and down strategies uh, for bidding uh, if you start to see some positive results. So I think it's um, it's a game of like, try, you know, starting a lot of campaigns out, but then watching which ones are actually, you know, giving you some initial data points and results and then doubling down on those uh, and maybe easing back on the ones that are not giving you too much, uh, you know, in terms of conversions and so on. So uh, typically we, we, we do that, our agency, and it has, uh, you know, consistently produced results. So, uh, I would like to invite others also to share their uh, approaches. Yep, that's good. Um, when you say a small budget, Charlene, um, it's it really makes a difference what you mean by a small budget. Do you mean $10 a day or $30 a day? The strategy would be different even just between those numbers. Um, and uh, yeah, so like if you only have $10 a day, then I would make it really simple and just pick one to five keywords, like, uh, you know, according to the criteria that we've already talked about so far, and um, or otherwise run an auto campaign with really low bids and then stay on top of adding negative keywords. And uh, so that would be like the really, the, the smallest budget level is how I'd recommend starting. All right, excellent. Let's let's keep going, guys. We still have some more questions to cover. And Gary from New York asks, how soon after launch should one make the big push for driving outside traffic to Amazon via affiliate links, blogs, Facebook ads, social media influencers, etc.? Michelle. So you have, I'm sure we've all heard about the honeymoon period. If you haven't, it's basically, you know, give or take uh, 21 days after your listing is live. So I know some sellers who are like the second <laughs> that sucker is an FBA and the, and the listing is pushed live, uh, that they are driving that external traffic. Um, 
I don't think that that's necessary. I don't think it has to be down to the 30 second mark <laughs> that some sellers are at. I think you have some time. Uh, the average ranking campaign for us when we're using external traffic um, uh, is, is about 10 to 14 days, depending on the category, depending on the keywords, you know, that kind of a thing. You're going to see your biggest leaps in ranking um, during that 21 day period where Amazon's like, oh, hey, friend, you're new. Let's get you let's get you in front of some people. Looks like you're relevant for some keywords. All right, let's get you up there. So that's what we have found to be kind of our window of opportunity with launching. Now, that being said, um, you launch once, but you re-rank forever. OK, so you might be thinking like this is my one chance. I can't I can't miss this one window of opportunity. You can. OK, you can. And and you can still claw that opportunity back. Um, but understanding that Amazon base is ranking on a certain on that sales history and that rolling sales history. Um, you know, just keep that in mind for future you know, launches and ranking campaigns, even if you do launch and um, and don't take advantage of external traffic at that point, if you are unhappy with your ranking in the future, you can always leverage external traffic to help you re-rank or capture um, new uh, keyword opportunities in the future. So don't feel like this is your one opportunity, like, like you do have um, plenty of opportunity now and in the future, as long as you have inventory. That's the, that's the one caveat. You got to have products to sell. Yeah, I, I think that's so important, especially right now, having inventory, because we're going through the whole perfect storm of logistics challenges, the high shipping rates, the delays, the mm -hmm. inventory restrictions. And um, I love what Michelle covered in her session. It's like marketing and inventory, they really have to work together, right? Because if you make a big push in marketing, if you run out of stock, that's that's a waste, right? There's no point to that. And it's going to hurt your ranking until you get back in stock. So highly recommend that um, you guys pay attention to that. And we we have a session with Chelsea Cohen coming up later this week. And I think that will be super valuable for everyone. Uh, Chelsea Cohen, and she's going to teach how not to run out of stock using inventory management systems. And I love that Chelsea managed like you got to you know, your marketing team has to talk to your inventory control team, right? So it's like these guys have to be like working together for your whole machine to be flowing smoothly. So um, and, that, that, and that should highly affect your keyword strategy as well. Yes. You know, marketing yeah. aside, like any type, any type of marketing strategy, you use PPC, chatbots, any type of Facebook, uh, you know, marketing campaign, uh, know your inventory going into any type of campaigns that you're going to use. Yes. Yes. So, I mean, everything like we're talking about, it's like the natural progression of your business. That's why we structured the whole summit like this. So today is all about marketing and branding. And then going ahead to day four, as you guys can see, I'm going to share my screen. You can see on day four, it's all about profitability. And Chelsea Cohen will teach you how not to run out of stock using inventory management system. She's a co-founder at So Stocked. And many of the seven figure sellers i've talked to this is kind of like their secret weapon for inventory control so I highly recommend that you guys check out chelsea's session all right so uh let, let's come back sorry for the the diversion um okay we have some more questions as well okay jason chan i love this question what is your daily weekly and monthly process for ppc and Brian, would you like to take a shot at this first? I know you have a checklist for, for Jason. Is that right? Yeah, I've had a, I've had a checklist that's been out for years now um, that we update on a regular basis. And um, I, I like the fact that uh, Rito covered, um, you know, basically the 80, 20, cause I'm a huge proponent of uh, Pareto's principle when it comes to advertising in that I like to each week, if I'm going through and optimizing ads, um, I'm looking at key metrics, uh, conversion rate, uh, click-through rate. I have a high focus where I try to focus on the 20% of the products, 20% of the ad types, and 20% of the ad targets. Targets being things like keywords, um, ASINs, categories. Um, so 20% of each of those that have the highest conversion rate. 
because typically what I get out of that by focusing in on those that have the highest conversion rate is I'm likely to get uh, profitability. I'm likely to have an influence ranking. I'm likely to have the campaigns actually work as a result um, of, uh, of focusing on those. Um, that's kind of a kind of a high level one. I won't go through as far as like what my, you know, my 10 step checklist is. Um, that's that's freely available um, in most locations that I live or as um, <laughs> as Gary point puts up into comments. Yes, there's yeah. from, from there as well. Um, and that kind of walks you through as far as like some some 10 common things to check in your search terms, your keywords, your product targets um, in order to see where you need to do some optimization based off of the conversion rate of your products. But um, probably as I'm sure Ritu, I haven't had a chance to look at your presentation yet. Uh, I will, uh, but, but just the fact that she's focused there on the 80-20 a uh, huge fan of that process. So I would definitely circle back around to her presentation because I think that's probably going to align with what I've been trying to state here. Yeah, and I can also jump in here. Uh, yeah, just adding to what uh, Brian is saying, definitely, you know, you probably have to align your process with whatever mechanism you're using. So for example, if you're just using um, CSV based, you know, uh, you know, optimization techniques, then, you know, you'll be restricted by that. But let's say you're using some sort of software, then, you know, you will have a different approach, uh, no doubt. Um, you know, just to give you an example, there are some softwares, including ours, that give uh, daily bid recommendations. Uh, and those are not daily as in checking for what happened yesterday, but they are you know, dynamically generated um, based on data sufficiency for each keyword. So whenever a keyword is kind of ready uh, for a change, you know, you go ahead and uh, accept those uh, recommendations. So let's say if you have a software like that, uh, that gives you, um, you know, recommendations on a regular basis, then, you know, follow that uh, cadence. Um, otherwise, you probably have to use something like a 14 day look back and a rolling 40 day, 14 day look back, uh, in excluding the last couple of days to allow for data to come in and stuff like that. So that would be, I guess, the most important um, thing to monitor your 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 bids and how you're doing against your target ACOS. Um, and then, uh, you know, on a weekly basis, I definitely go in and look at my campaigns and try to see if there's anything at the campaign level that I can figure out which might help uh, maybe boost or encourage certain campaigns that are doing extremely well. Again, going with the 80-20 principle, I start with the worst performers and the, and the best performers and see if there's any small adjustment that could make uh, a little bit of a difference, um, you know, that goes a long way, I think. Uh, so for example, um, campaign placements, not that I touch them uh, that often, I shouldn't because there's, uh, you know, additionally, you're also making changes to your bid. So you don't want to cause swings by also adjusting your campaign uh, placement modifiers, et cetera. But sometimes you will find some really good opportunities there with, uh, you know, uh, campaigns that are doing both great in terms of ACoS as well as conversion rate. Those are the two metrics I look at in order to pick up the ones that are worthy of a little bit of a promotion or a boost. Uh, so I, I would do that on a regular basis, like a weekly basis. And then looking for negative keywords, which tends to happen maybe once in two weeks, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, faster if, if it's a launch or something like that, looking for uh, keywords to, um, you know, examine for whether they're negative or whether there's something on the listing that needs to be improved. And then on a monthly basis, uh, you know, we go in and look at uh, keywords that had zero impressions uh, because there's this huge problem of zero impressions on Amazon where, you know, you if you start large campaigns, like even if it's anything greater than 50 keywords per campaign, then chances are that a majority of them don't get any impressions at all. Uh, it's only just the way the algorithm works. It picks up a few and lets the others sit in the pool forever and forever. Um, and so what we do is we go in and extract those keywords and start new campaigns with the ones that didn't get any impressions and that kind of restarts um, the process for them. So we can't be doing that every week. It has to be done, you know, maybe a month or a one and a half months. So I guess every optimization opportunity will have a cadence, which you'll have to kind of figure out based on whatever software you're using or whatever um, other methods you're using to determine those. So uh, I don't know if that makes sense. Awesome. Great. Something I would uh, 
add to there is uh, going back uh, to what Michelle had said about inventory. Um, so in one of the things we do in our monthly process is we, we establish the goals for the following month in coordination with, uh, with inventory and other business uh, issues like, you know, maybe there's extra money now to spend, or maybe there's a bit of a cash flow tightness and they want to spend less or something along those lines. We do the monthly big goal setting. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then Rito already talked about, uh, uh, you know, all the weekly stuff and daily stuff that we do as well. Oops. Right. Let, let's keep going, guys. So Charlene says, thanks for the comments. We'll need to delve a little bit deeper. Yes, a lot to take it. And thanks. And Gary says, my coach said I should lower my price initially to get more sales to keep my ranking up during the initial launch. Agreed? It works for a lot of people. Doesn't work for everyone. Or you yeah, could use I, coupons. Sorry. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, or you could use coupons because, you know, coupons give you a nice uh, badge that shows up in a lot of prominent places. So, you know, instead of lowering your price, you could give a percentage off or a dollar off. Dollar off tends to work better. It's a fine line. You you definitely want to take a look at the, what, the, what the lower priced ones that may come off as being so, so low priced that they're actually cheap quality is the perception. Quality, you yeah. don't want to hit that, that low threshold. So I, I would agree. say yes, initially to help with sales velocity. Yeah. You would lower, you could lower your price, but don't lower it so much that you're getting down into the cheap wood, you know, the, the cheap seats. You, you're simply just, um, you know, you're just well priced for the, the, pricing group that you're normally trying to to compete against um the, the second half of this is farther down the road is if you're feeling like you're not ranking high enough or you're not competing well enough against competitors um but your price is right in line i don't recommend that people reduce their price in fact i actually recommend do a proper listing optimization um, and align your marketing and your advertising and and increase your price yeah that's a great point talking about increasing your price we have a session on day three tomorrow from Shevin, sharon evan uh quick shout out to her as you can see in the schedule how to price higher sell less and make more profits so think about it you can make more profit less units sold uh and it could help alleviate a lot of the, the high shipping fees and the inventory restrictions. I, I love the case study that she shared. She's going to share tomorrow. So definitely check that out, guys. Um, Gary as well. Definitely don't miss that. And I love to, if you can come back tomorrow to let us know your thoughts and questions about that. Awesome, guys. All right, let's keep going. We, we only have a couple minutes left while the time flew by. Let's see. Um, Belinda had a question. How effective would you say the TikTok platform is for generating external traffic to Amazon? Any thoughts on that? I mean, it can be phenomenally great, especially if you have something that takes off and, and goes viral um, and is appropriate to that, that particular audience. I mean, that's that's one example with TikTok. So, so kind of like referring to what I said earlier, external traffic is all very powerful and good as long as it's focused through something. So if you are going to go after TikTok influencers or Instagram influencers, any anything that looks like a shiny, cool toy or trend, <laughs> never want to be careful. Uh, marketing is where the money gets spent, y'all. So money and time and a lot of waste can happen there. But just make sure that you're doing it through um, relevant keywords for your listings. So you're not just saying like, hey, TikTok influencer, like send anybody uh, my way. Of course, you can send people directly to your listing, but I would always use, if you're going to do that, use a keyword URL, use a pixeled link of some sort so that you can capture um, that traffic that's going to be hitting your um, hitting your page. And, and you know, if you can use chatbots because then you have literal subscribers that you can follow up with and do all those fun things. So um, external traffic is, is like I said, is it, there's so many cool things that you can do in marketing. Like accounting's boring. Marketing is fun and sexy, you know. 
but it can also turn into a huge um, waste of time and waste of money if you're not using it uh, effectively for your life. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I would add, add on to that from a, from a, um, as far as like an influencer standpoint is uh, a common mistake that I see is where uh, a product owner will go out and try to reach out to influencers and they'll try to get the biggest influencer they can find and then offer them a kickback or a percentage or a free product or something like that. And, and most influencers could care less what you're selling or what product you have or whether or not they make you know any money off of what they're doing. They're usually in the camp of what are you doing to make me look good in front of my audience? because you care about my audience um, or what are you going to pay me to, to in order to, to make a post with this? I would probably generally try to stay away from anybody who's uh, you know, asking for a bunch of money to, to post it and focus more on how can you help that influencer, especially a micro influencer look better to their own audience, you know, make them look good. Um, and that usually that's not commission or a kickback or something like that. It's, like how are you? How are you going to make it look so that it's like I'm the boss of my my niche because I was able to hook you guys up with something that's directly relevant to my audience and that they would actually like? That's how you motivate an influencer to actually share what you're selling. Right, right. That's a great point. It's like that old commercial: if if you don't look good, we don't look good, right? Right. So you got to make the, the yeah, make them look good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'd just like to quickly highlight, talking about TikTok tomorrow, Mayan Gordon, she's going to give a training on the future of video in marketing for e-commerce. She has 2 million followers on TikTok. So highly recommend you, uh, highly recommend Belinda, you check that out tomorrow. That's, that goes live on um, Wednesday, 2 p.m. All right. And talking about influencers, Mike Jackness also mentioned ways to to find more qualified influencers without overspending, which is a great point that, that Brian just mentioned as well. All right. Uh, we only have a, a few minutes le left, guys. So to round out the hour, I'm going to stop my screen share. Um, I just like to go around the, the room. You know, I'm all about the 80-20 rule. So you know, given everything we talked about today, uh, PPC, external traffic, um, social media influencers, what would be your number one recommendation to, to give to all of our, our audience today to really help them with their, their marketing, branding, and PPC? Michelle, would you like to start? you got to give us these, these kind of questions far in advance. The number one thing you need to do is, and don't self-promote. Um, I mean, Besides talking to Michelle. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say chatbots. Um, yeah. No, I mean, at the end of the day, like all the, all the, like the really great things that are going on here, you have to do what's best for your brand and your budget. You know, that's like marketing rules, like marketing one-on-one. And I, you know, yes, I'm the CEO of the software company, but I've also been doing marketing for over 20 years. And that's just the rule of being in business is to, um, you know, approach this from the standpoint of like, what makes sense for um, the, the type of brand that I have and the kind of marketing budget that I have to bring to the table. You know, when somebody's just getting started, PPC is a really great option to just get on the board and get out there. And then as you grow, introducing external traffic and marketing techniques is a really great um, way to uh, to uh, um, um, to influence that growth and and to kind of take it your you and your brand and your products to the next level. So I think that's really what it comes down for down to for me is to not just like chase the shiny objects, but to be uh, to be disciplined and to do what makes sense for your brand and your budget. Awesome. And Michelle, for people that want to learn more, what's the best way to connect? Yeah, head over to easybot.com. Um, it's spelled like easy, not easy but <laughs> easy like it's easy um easybot.com and that's where we uh, have a chatbot platform that sits on top of many chat and makes the setting up of your launching ranking um and product insert review campaigns easy awesome thanks so much and we'll drop that in the chat as well thanks so much michelle thanks for having me yes and alice what is your number one 
80-20 recommendation? Well, for people running PPC campaigns on Amazon, it's to really focus on the fundamentals and not on fads. And the fundamentals involve more than anything else, knowing your conversion rates, knowing your keywords and competitors, and knowing your margins. And so that you can set your bids and budgets uh, with all three in mind. Perfect. And what's the best way to connect, Ellis? Uh, well, databrill.com. All right, perfect. So we'll drop that in the chat. Thank you, Ellis. Uh, next, you. we have Brian, 80-20 rule of time. What do I'm you gonna say? disagree with all of you. No, I'm kidding. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> second what uh, Ellis Ellis said. Is that if you if you got to pick one thing, focus on fundamentals. Um, I'm a huge proponent. You'll see hear me say this every single day. Is focus first on your conversion rate because your conversion rate is usually the metric that tells you the story as far as where the problem lies or or where your superpower is. It could be the conversion rate of your product. Could be conversion rate of a specific ad type that you're running. Um, that's going to be the source as far as saying like, look, this is working. That's when the 80, 20 gets involved here. This is what's working. This is what's not working. Focus your time on what's working. Don't waste your time on stuff. That's not working. There's going to be a lot of things that you can choose from this year, as far as you can take on and you can add on. Um, but you, you got to know how you're, you're essentially presented, you know, how things are working for you on, on the platform as is and start with conversion rate. Perfect, start with conversion rate. And best way to connect, Brian? Canopymanagement.com. There you go, excellent, thank you. And Ritu, what's your 80-20 rule recommendation? Yeah, so, you know, obviously I'm thinking of PPC and, uh, you know, my, um, you know, whole understanding of PPC is that we're dealing with this algorithm that not everybody has a, a full grasp on. And a lot of times it'll behave in ways that are totally unexpected, unpredictable. And so my 80-20 is to um, try and figure out what the algorithm is as far as your uh, ads are going. Like you don't have to follow uh, all the, you know, techniques and, you know, strategies that are out there uh, without really looking at if it's actually working for you. So definitely start with an idea of, you know, what you want, which which way you want to go in terms of your strategy, whether you want to start like um, uh, inching up your bids uh, when you launch or, you know, you know, go aggressive and then lower it, whatever strategy you, you pick, uh, it's all about understanding the algorithm as quickly as possible when you, uh, when you launch your products and um, then find those gems that are worth promoting and double down on those and let go of the one. Don't be obsessed with uh, only keyword based, um, uh, you know, uh, bidding because there's other ad types that you could uh, pick from that can more than make up for uh, the expense or, or the rising expenses of, uh, you know, keyword based um, uh, advertising on Amazon. So uh, try to figure out what the algorithm is doing for you as quickly as possible uh, and then double down on whatever is working. Perfect. And best way to connect with you, Ritu. Yeah, I think uh, LinkedIn would be the best. I'm active there. Uh, you can also uh, reach out to us through our website and we do a, a mastermind that uh, I've, I've put a, a link for that uh, there. Yeah, so it's a free mastermind that you can sign up for if you're interested. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. And tomorrow oh, we'll t talk about scaling. Uh, we'll, we have uh, d sessions that will really complement you when it comes to pricing, uh, how to dominate your niche, uh, how to get more reviews, future video marketing, uh, scaling your business, and also expanding into Amazon EU. So we have an action-packed day. Um, if you haven't already, I highly recommend you guys check out the All Access Pass. Uh, sessions from day one are closing now. If you missed it, uh, the All Access Pass can unlock all of these, all of the sessions. And also, um, a lot of our speakers offered really amazing bonuses as well. Um, you know, people like... Like Brian Johnson, he's offering like three uh, coaching one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions uh, just to only three people. So I highly recommend you guys check that out. All right. So thank you, everybody, for, for coming on. Oh, we got to run. Uh, th thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Ellis. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Ritu. Really appreciate you guys. Dropped a ton of value today. Super grateful for you guys. And we will see you guys at the next session. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.